Sometime around 1600 BC, a thriving Bronze Age maritime civilization that we refer to as the Minoans ruled the island of Crete and the neighboring island of Santorini, also known as Thera. They thrived for many thousands of years until they hit a turning point around 1550 BC and within 100 years the civilization came to an abrupt and tragic decline. At this point in time, it's estimated that the Minoans had a population of 100,000 or more, with most of them mainly situated on the island of Crete, which was the civilization's home base. The Minoans had lived in and ruled this area and the surrounding Aegean islands since at least 7000 BC, when the first proper habitation occurred, which took shape as a pre-ceramic Neolithic farming community, though there are hominid remains that have been found that date back to 130,000 years ago. The Minoans were an incredible civilization that is shrouded in almost complete mystery. We only very recently rediscovered their existence in the 19th century and we don't actually know what they called themselves. The term Minoan was given to them in the mid 19th century by the British archaeologist Arthur Evans when excavations were being undertaken to discover the story of this once great civilization. In this video, we're going to cover the massive volcanic eruption that severely impacted the Minoans. It very well might have been the largest factor in their rapid decline, and it's possible that it set forth a chain of events that led to their eventual downfall. The Minoan volcanic eruption was so large that midway through the eruption, the magma chamber collapsed in on itself, spawning a mega tsunami with waves estimated to be up to 150 meters in height. This mega tsunami traveled directly towards the island of Crete, and with very little warning, it smashed directly into the capital city of the Minoans, causing untold damage and destroying vast quantities of valuable war and trade ships, along with cities and farmland, severely affecting the population and making the civilization vulnerable to an attack from an outside empire. This is the story of the Minoans and the Santorini volcanic eruption. The Minoans were an extremely advanced civilization. They built large and elaborate palaces up to four stories high, featuring complicated plumbing systems and decorated with frescoes. The largest Minoan city is that of Gnosis, followed by Vastos, but the island of Crete has several archaeological sites as the Minoans were widespread on the island when their decline began. On Santorini, the Minoans had inhabited the entire island prior to the cataclysmic volcanic eruption that measured a 7 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, meaning it was as large and powerful as the Tambora eruption. This means it would have caused significant changes in the climate, along with an immense level of destruction when it had erupted. When Tambora erupted, it caused a famine that spread all across Europe, leading to the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people just from the ash cloud that was spawned and the sun-blocking aerosols that were released during the volcanic eruption. When the Minoans inhabited Santorini, the island actually looked quite similar to how it does in present day. The only difference where the island was an almost complete ring shape, with the only inlet being located in the southwest, compared to the three large openings that exist today, and the caldera island that existed then, referred to as Precomeni, had almost 20,000 years to build up in size, and so it was quite large and almost stretched from one side of the harbour to the other. It was essentially a larger, more mature version of the two Kameni islands that exist today. It's unknown if the Minoans knew that Santorini was actually a caldera left over from a once gigantic eruption, or if they knew it was still active in present day, because a lot of the evidence and depositions from past volcanic eruptions had been almost completely, if not completely eroded from the island by wind and rain when it was originally settled. And the only volcanic activity that had occurred up to the Minoan eruption was small effusive eruptions and fumaroles, which most likely made the Minoans think that the volcanic activity here was only minor at best. Unfortunately, they were very, very wrong. Santorini has been active for roughly 2 million years. Beginning around 200,000 years ago, the Santorini volcano took a violent turn. It started a cycle of mountain building, erupting, and violently collapsing into a caldera, after which it would repeat that cycle time and time again, meaning this type of eruption will almost certainly occur again in the future. 
The present day caldera is composed of overlapping shield volcanoes and is cut by at least four partially overlapping calderas, meaning the scale of destructivity witnessed during the Minoan eruption has occurred four times in the past 200,000 years. The actual Minoan eruption of the Santorini volcano is often split into four phases. Phase 1. The months leading up to the eruption. Thankfully, the Minoans that inhabited Santorini were given a warning of what was to come many months prior to the actual major eruption. A standard Plinian eruption initially occurred. It would have been similar to the recent Mount St. Helens eruption, minus the flank collapse as it released a 10 km high pillar of ash and pumice and it exploded violently. The wind carried the ash plume in a southeasterly direction, blanketing the Akrotiri settlement that existed on Santorini. The town of Akrotiri was the main Minoan settlement on the Santorini island. With this eruption, it's thought that a large number of earthquakes occurred both prior to and after this event as magma slowly rose up from the depths of the earth to form the main eruption that would occur only a few months after this event. It seems like either this eruption, or it and the associated earthquakes, led to a migration from the island, as no human remains have ever been found, and it seems like a mass evacuation occurred, as most possessions were taken along with the fleeing residents. This initial eruption occurred prior to winter rains, which eroded a lot of the ash and pumice released, leaving only a fine layer behind for geologists to study in present day. In the spring, the next phase would begin. Phase 2. The eruption begins. When the first major eruption started, it was initially characterised by a major magmatic explosion that literally blasted forth in a Plinian style from the pre kameni island. In doing so, it exposed the massive underlying magma chamber to the surrounding shallow marine embayment, and seawater began to flood into the chamber, mixing with the vast quantities of magma, and like a nuclear bomb, it would explode ferociously. A massive 30 to 35 km high eruption column was released, which reached the stratosphere as the volcano blew forth massive volcanic bombs, ash, pumice, and gigantic and deadly pyroclastic surges in all directions, literally sterilizing the surrounding Santorini Island, which would be buried in up to 70 meters worth of pumice by the end of the eruption. Any man-made structures that were not destroyed during the first phase of the eruption that occurred prior to winter were now completely destroyed and buried beneath meters of volcanic material. This eruption would completely bury the entire Akrotiri settlement and it would remain forgotten about until the 1900s, when it was finally rediscovered in 1967. This phase of the eruption would occur for several hours, as large sections of the Santorini Island would be blown apart from the force of the explosions. Smaller tsunami waves that were generated as a direct result of volcanic explosions are thought to have occurred, but these would be nothing compared to what was about to come next. Phase 3 and 4. Caldera Collapse and the Aftermath After several long and violent hours worth of eruptions, the large magma chamber beneath Santorini was rapidly emptying as more and more magma was blasted out into the surrounding island and sea. As the magma chamber emptied, it began to become unstable. Eventually, the magma chamber collapsed in upon itself, which would have been the climax of this unbelievably large eruption. This collapse caused a variety of extremely dangerous events to occur. Firstly, a large displacement of water occurred as the caldera collapsed in upon itself, and as a result, a mega tsunami up to 150 meters in height was spawned, along with perhaps the largest and most explosive eruption as the remaining magma inside of the magma chamber got forced out during the collapse in one big final squeeze and when it mixed with water, what I can only imagine to be a cataclysmic sound echoed forth in the largest blast of the eruption, changing the shape of the island to appear how it does in present day. But it didn't end there. The collapse generated a massive pyroclastic base surge, which spread outwards and covered the entire island and surrounding sea for a vast distance. And along with this, even lahars were generated. The tsunami that was created was sent in all directions, but it was on a direct collision course with the island of Crete. 
At that time, the capital of Crete, Gnosis, was located in the northern part of Crete, and the city itself was below 100 metres above sea level. So the largest tsunami waves were able to reach it, and the wave devastated a number of settlements on the island of Crete with a force strong enough to smash down buildings. It's my speculation that a large amount of war and trade ships that Crete used would have been located in the northern part of the island, near the capital, and I speculate that this tsunami wave would have decimated a large part of their naval fleet by pushing the boats into the city as the tsunami waves pushed into the island similar to what happened during the 2011 earthquake and tsunami of Japan. The only difference is the waves that hit Crete were 110 metres higher than the 40 metre waves that devastated Japan. The ashfall and pumice deposits from the Minoan eruption are found all over the eastern Mediterranean, stretching as far as Turkey. The heaviest ashfall fell around the east and northeast of Santorini. Ash barely fell on Crete, and only did during the first phase when Santorini erupted in a standard Plinian fashion. It's worth mentioning that we don't know exactly what year this eruption occurred. The most recent estimate from a 2022 study shows that the Santorini eruption occurred between 1611 and 1538 BCE. The radiocarbon dates and the archaeological dates are in substantial disagreement, but one thing is certain. This eruption was one of the largest to have occurred since humans began their domination of the planet. That is certainly undisputed. After the eruption After this eruption, the Minoan civilization attempted to continue. It would be plagued by another large natural disaster in the mid-1400 BCE, and it's speculated that it was a major earthquake that occurred. This earthquake destroyed many cities and palaces. On top of this, the nearby Mycenaean Greeks began their harassment of the Minoans, and they would eventually conquer the entire island. They most likely saw the eruption and tsunami and ensuing earthquakes as an opportunity to take over this prosperous island and valuable trading route and claim it for themselves. At their height, the Minoans were a massive and advanced civilization that traded with all nearby civilizations such as the Egyptians. But within only 200 years, everything would change and their marked decline would begin. Eventually, their cities were raised, and their culture would become incorporated into the other Hellenistic states, and they would be sadly forgotten about for the most part. The island of Santorini was forever changed, and was uninhabited for many hundreds of years following this eruption. The settlement of Akrotiri was forgotten about, and what was once a bustling trade route for copper ceased in a matter of hours, along with the beautifully paved streets, the extensive drainage system, and the production of high-quality pottery and further craft specialisations that point to the level of sophistication once achieved by the settlement. The Santorini volcano would remain seemingly dormant to the eye following the Minoan eruption. Beneath the ocean, deep within the earth, new magma was rising from the melting, subducting African plate and was beginning the process all over again as it slowly accumulated. In 197 BC, the next eruption occurred from the central vent, releasing Dacitic magma and creating a new island that we know today as Palia Kameni. These same characteristics would occur time and time again. In 1707, the island of Nia Kameni was born during an eruption. In present day, the entire island is populated and the residents are in danger of another eruption occurring at any time. But for many, it's well worth the risk to live in such a beautiful and idyllic Caldera Island. So this is the story of Santorini for now, until the next big one occurs. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, consider sharing this video around. It really helps the channel out. If you're a fan of volcanism, geology, geography, earth sciences or science in general, then consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button. I'll be releasing more content like this regularly. Thank you again, and I'll see you all real soon.